guys, what's going on? So today we're doing a couple um, interesting, uh, we're doing a twofer video. So I'm gonna tell you about this bike and I'm gonna tell you about that bike. Uh, kind of really neat because they're sort of similar in a certain way. Um, you know, this is my Univega 950 DS or you can say DS 950. Um, you know, back in the day, I used to rate, I had a mango one with a black swing arm and uh, pretty cool. It had a, I think it was a RockShox Indy fork up front. Um, but uh, I ended up like, I forget. I literally forget where that bike honestly went. Um, but uh, I always wanted to get another one, you know, years later. Cause I was like, man, that was such a cool bike to have. You know, I just want to have bikes that I used to race on and ride um or even have helped me win you know races from back in the day so i found this years ago dozen like maybe over at least i want to say at least 2010 um i've had this bike i've had this bike since 2010 but i was back in the day i was racing on um cross country um before racing on a full suspension was even like a thing and uh downhill races because what was happening is when i was racing on down uh, in downhill courses you know i could do it on a hardtail i just wasn't competitive anymore right because the the course evolved and it got more technical um they got more um <sighs> challenging for a hardtail so um i wanted i was like well i need to stay i'd like to stay competitive so i need to get a full suspension bike um and same with the cross country course it got um a little more rougher and technical uh and you know for some of the courses i knew i could get away with like a full suspension because they weren't too hilly or if they were they were like a smooth uphill like in most of the races i did so or i just had to manage my pedaling um on a urt style bike like this because that was the thing uh the reason i didn't have a gt lts or uh at that time is um you know they were way too expensive uh you know for you for the univega disc 950 it had um, a nice group set with it, uh, you know, had Segino or Segino cranks. It was like a three by eight system on a Shimano Dior LX um, setup, and I uh, had an Indy fork in which, you know, no lockout back in then. Um, so you really just had to set your preload like really high or something, and there was no rebound adjust. So you just got used to it. And the bike was fairly light. Um, you know, with the URT stuff, a lot of people nag or make fun of it because now you do find a design at Walmart. That's true. But back in the day, um, you know, as mountain bike tech was evolving, you know, it was kind of the new thing. Trek really set the tone um, with their Y bikes. Like the Y50 was a really hot bike. It was the carbon OC OCLV stuff and, um, you know, really cool um, designs were coming out of it. Interestingly enough for Univega, um, they had shared the same when them and Raleigh were under the same um, like Derby Cycles parent company. Um, they shared the same full suspension designs. Um, you know, so you'll see like a Raleigh and Univega like by like some some of their older bikes look the same, and that's why. Um, you know, so let's go over this bike. Um, this is going to be the final iteration or final cha parts change that I do unless something breaks. Uh, because what's happened here, unfortunately, is the uh, main pivot is broken, or it's not broken. Maybe it, uh, maybe it's cracked. I don't know. There's some weird popping and creaking noises here. Um, it's a bush. These are bushings, um, as you can tell. You know, I haven't. I don't have a tool to take this apart um, and see what kind. If I could get away with other kind of bushings, but I mean, mind you, it's probably eating into the frame too um, as I pedal sometimes i get some really not like amp research noticeable flex but there is some play in here and uh, i wanted to find out how bad it is i grabbed the crank arm and i just held the mainframe triangle and uh you know the bike like flexes <laughs> so just on pulling just arm strength so not uphill pulling but um i'll pretty much ride this bike until you know um I'm probably not comfortable or I don't feel safe like riding it I but you know that's that's a very subjective thing uh, I probably push my luck on some of this stuff but uh, depending I'll probably give this a few more good rides you know it's uh it's been a fun bike I've had it for all these years and believe it or not like it's impressive to know that I've raced cross-country on this kind of white bike when it had a coil spring 
no lockout um geez i think it only had preload so i had to set it pretty high on my cross country races and if i were hitting if i was hitting like um 90 style jumps as they call them like you know you just pray to god that you didn't uh the bike wouldn't buck you over and stuff because we were still high posting back in the day so uh you know like i think or maybe early 2000s um definitely before 2002 for sure um because that's around 2002 i i dialed back everything I actually was getting ready for college so i didn't race um anymore but i had hung it all up i had hung up mountain biking completely so um yeah kind of nuts but let's go over to bike uh here it runs a spank Spoon 785 handlebar. Um, I've cut it down to um, 720 millimeters wide. It runs a race face half Nelson grips. Uh, Shimano 10 speed Z shifter, which is great. You can get these on Jensen USA for I think about roughly 25 bucks. Um, plus shipping if you are buy less than $60. Um, I found some spare Cane Creek lovers I had from a one a broken RTS. Actually, this bike is a combination of two broken GT RTS bikes that I've had, and uh, I like these lovers. Um, you know, they feel as they don't feel as good as the XTRs, uh, but you know it is what it is, and uh, they feel pretty good. Like the they're very comfortable um, when you're using the brake a lot. Uh, here I'm running this eight dollar Amazon stem. Uh, just because you know it's it's not like i want to dump too much more money into this bike i mean geez i already spent like 200 bucks on a shock uh but that's from years ago uh and of course not a specialized bike but i had a spare top cap threw it on and uh yeah this is so i've converted this bike to a 1x10 setup it's pretty cool you know there's a it's this is a very cheap 15 20 dollar part you can find on amazon it's uh by rock ride it's a 104 bcd 322 9 through 10 speed compatible um in this color just wanted to try to match it with the bike make it look awesome <laughs> and so uh you know there's that uh this sr suntour xct um crank set uh sr suntour north america had um these you could get these for about roughly i think 70 dollars and because they're in the same the distribution centers in the same state as where i live um i was able to get these overnight so uh they shipped them over i ordered them they shipped them overnight got here um these are a little bit of a pain to install um and get them working nice uh just because and i'll explain when i get on the other side um <laughs> The, the the installation uh the instructions are not don't tell you you should lock tight these don't even give you a torque setting and they give you this really crummy tool you know just do the preload um when you're t when you tighten this tighten this preload for the bottom bracket and uh, uh what uh just had some issues but it, it's finally worked out this isn't coming loose anymore and uh, after like every 15 mile ride and um you know it's torqued down right and it's worked out pretty well for a 70 dollar crank set it was a two by system um let me pop back on the other side and so um here it's interesting because it's a i i've, I've tried different setups um they used to run a front derailleur like it used to be a three by then a two by then i tried multiple one by systems a one by eight a one by nine and the chain would always fall off every time i hit bumps and jumps all like even minor um and it's you know like the chain would always fall off so with the 10 speed it hasn't happened um mind you the rear derailleur is clutchless so it doesn't i don't have that option on here um and the, the chain's not too snug on here as you can tell you know um but i'm running a 1x10 system it's a sunrace rear cassettes and 1142 um for i don't like to do 46 or anything more than that 42 is like kind of a good sweet spot um for a lot of these uh old school bikes because once you get past that to get really the i from experience from my experience um anything above the 42 tooth range on these old ass bikes you'll always get some kind of issue where you always get to slightly adjust or it comes out of tune 
pretty easily so that's why I do it this way I just stick with an 1142 um, tooth cassette just like I've done on that bike um, here's uh, the KSE 10 you might have seen it on that bike and uh, I moved it here just because actually even when I max out the travel even though this gap is really narrow um, as you can see here doesn't hit it um, I've I've messed up a few times but uh, when you correctly adjust this this is pretty much a safe this is a Lee this is the amount of clearance you can get because what happens is this swing arm will move past and you'll end up like here so that's how I know that <laughs> I've tried it out um, on a rigid seat post so um, that's why I went with a dropper so I could actually hit drops and um, kind of enjoy this bike a little bit more on this last leg I guess um, tire wise uh, it's running a Volta Zero Light up front because I wanted it to be aerodynamic no I'm kidding um, I just had a spare um, tire and wheel set so it runs the Velociraptor um, tires in which you can find these pretty cheap these days like under 20 bucks each um, I know REI will have a sale on these and you can get them for yeah about 20 bucks um, here's another budget fork um, that's held through it's a I mean not the most durable fork but for what you I'm asking of it um, it's a good fork uh, you know it's a 100 125 dollar fork RockShox XC28 um, as you can tell you know um, because it still has quick it gets you still get it it's a 26 inch fork it's non tapered it's a one and one eighth you get lockout that actually works the lockout works um, preload adjust rebound adjustment that actually works um, if you're running v rim brakes still, you still it's still compatible with rim brakes or disc brakes here. Um, I think the max you can do is 180 on rotors, I think, so uh, there's that. Um, here, you know, with the V brakes, it's just slapped together parts. I had to buy um, these, I had to buy a new V brake, but um, I've just been... Hi, Hi Kara. And so I've salvaged... Um, pretty much like some old v-brakes and slapped them together to make this whole bike work as you can tell here <laughs> and here's the pro logo saddle uh you know it's a 147 millimeter wide one um here's the i think i already went over the eight dollar amazon stem and then this is a pretty uh this is like a spare like dropper lever that i've had uh you know I, I'm, I run the nicer levers on my other bikes, but this one's fine. Like, it works, uh, does the job. And uh, that's kind of it for the bike check, other than the Originate headset, which is, if anybody's thinking about getting an Originate headset, a uh, little fun hack, you can run a Chris King um, Crown Race on here because the one for this, well, I mean, years ago, I don't know, maybe Originate has changed it, but... Uh, it's plastic and it gets brittle and it will um, it wears out you know and so you will eventually have to replace it so I think if you can get a metal option from the manufacturer it'll work but Chris if you have a spare a spare Chris King headset I have plenty of Chris King headsets in a one one eight that's how I'm able to do make this happen um, you can run a crown race so uh, that that's it for the bike check here um, so let's pop over on the GTI drive because a lot uh, I've, I've kind of screwed up this bike in one way <laughs> royally and it's uh, this PNW dropper um, so just what happened PNW makes a dropper post or they they re, they they're doing um, dropper post re, uh, refurbs and uh, you know you can get a dropper post pretty cheap from them like roughly about a hundred bucks it's a refurbished and uh, I bought the wrong one. I got too excited because I was like, whoa, this is a PNW Coast dropper with this, like, it's a 40 millimeter, um, you get 40 millimeters of suspension travel, you know, so it's like a suspension seat post, but it will adjust down to like, a, like this one's the 110 um, version, so you can get it to adjust down to, you know, all the way to the bottom. I for, I should have looked. I was I meant to get the external one so I didn't have this issue here but 
um, it is what it is, and I don't think you can, I, I looked, and, uh, not able to return them, uh, because I, I screwed that up, I, you know, all sales final, so I screwed that up royally, um, but that's fine, you know, it's, I had to do a trick here, um, let me see, get on the other side, oh my god, let me just move the bike, yeah. Jeez. Okay, there we go. So I've had it I had to mount I had to link two zip ties together. So this housing isn't rubbing onto this part. Um I at some point I will get the correct dropper on here, like an external dropper. Uh and um you know I uh the way I'm gonna do it is I have some 31.6 millimeter droppers. I'll just get a shim and that are internal or uh I have some bikes that can run 30.9 millimeter droppers um, internally, so I think if they wear out, um, I'll just get a replacement dropper post for this, the correct one, and uh, I'll use a shim or whatever if I need to, if it's a bigger dropper post on another bike to make it work, but um, this one's pretty good though, you know, uh, just kind of sucks I had to do this, but whatever, uh, <laughs> I'll live with it. Um, here. Let's see. This, I bought this on eBay for like 10 bucks and um, holds the bike, you know. Uh, here I, I wanted to go with a 1x10 setup for climbing um, because I do a decent amount of it where I live um, at this point. And so I had to get, unfortunately had to replace uh, the Avid or the Shimano XTR V brake. Um, shifter lever combos in order to make it work because they're only nine, you know, one was the rear was only a nine speed, so I went with these uh avids in which you can actually kind of adjust. That's so unnoticeable, but you can pretty much bring the lever closer or further out. Um, that's really it. Uh, here I'm using a very cheap, inexpensive PW dropper lever, you know, it's it takes some finesse to do. It can accept both the cable end or the cable head. Um, you know, and you can get like their, this little inexpensive dropper lever option for about, I think, geez, 20, roughly about 30 bucks to uh, average. Um, and as you can tell, works like that, you know. So I'm gonna have to get a mud guard or something or find a way to protect, keep, I'll probably take an old, bike inner tube and uh protect this area so there isn't dirt or crap or mud that is coming in here and going into the housing um so uh that's going to be something i'm going to have to do especially uh out in the winter um but i typically don't i not my winter bike uh here it kept the same setup uh you know it's just this same cheapo stem cane, the cane creek um integrated headset there's no cups in here you just drop bearings in here um and of course uh geez but the 10 speed setup is the latest update um if you guys have seen the video um i had this is so i can act, uh, and then i'm gonna put a chain stay an inner tube chain stay protector here um don't worry this isn't permanent this is this was just here because i kept hitting uh some jumps and i forgot i was like oh i keep chipping at this so th this is skateboard grip tape but um you know as you can tell peels off so and then you just get acetone wipe it off and uh it won't harm the paint it won't harm this paint i've tried it in a small patch and it's fine um or if need be i'll just repaint it uh if i if i was really really um into it so that's kind of it for the update for gti drive i thought i'd do a twofer because the interesting part about the, these two bikes is um the i drive has always been not always but um if anybody's watched gt's um full travel um their mountain bike uh or their full suspension mountain bike documentary Jim, like, uh, a lot of people will say, you know, like, oh, the iDrive's a fancy URT or, you know, it's a spin-off of the URT design. In which if you saw um, Jim Busby's, uh, or the video, 
there's a track Y bar. It's a D un, not. It's an un D. They removed the track decals on it, but uh, there's no. Oh, uh, let me see. They modify. They made. They must have made their own rear triangle, and they modified the front triangle to have this piece on here on a on a track Y bike. And if you look at this setup uh, on the Trek Y bike, um, because this is a URT platform uh, with a very similar setup, uh, it had they put the attachment for the dog bone on the mainframe right about here, and uh, you know the for the swing arm because th the bottom bracket is attached to the swing arm, um, so. Of course what they did for they must have made a special swing arm and made it to accommodate the eccentric bottom bracket because if you look this just this fits a regular bottom bracket oh god the chain ring is in the way for again but here um, you can see whoa there we great great ten dollar product um, anyway uh, you know, like, this is pretty hunkering large, so, you know, you have to make a swing arm for it. And he must have done that and turned that white bike into a test mule. But you can see, like, you know, pivot area is a little bit different, right? But, um... You know, if you compared both bikes, you know, the bottom bracket is separate. And detached from the main front triangle and uh, here it's the same thing um, both ride kind of the same have are very plush bikes um, this one though rides a lot better um, <laughs> rides way better uh, just because when you're it uh, the way it's set up it ice when you're pedaling uphill you don't get a lot of that pedal bob that you would on this bike and uh, handles a lot better um so you know it's a, it's a pretty fun bike uh but if if you watch full travel there they have a picture of it it's kind of cool um just to see it um but yeah these are pretty much the updates that i have for uh, my bikes this one um when i retire it i'll move a lot of the parts over to another gt um frame that i have i have the I have a GT Zaskar build. I have like a 16 inch ram. I haven't built up. Um, so, and I'm moving um, to a bigger place. So, um, I'll actually be able to build up a lot of my bikes in full and um, <laughs> ride them. So, that's going to be fun. That's really exciting for me. Uh, so, but this bike, unfortunately, um, you know, it's on its way out just because these. Uh, there's just a lot there's play in the pivot and it's starting to the, it, you know it's obviously developing as I can put miles on this bike so at some point probably maybe this year I'll retire it out um, kind of bummer but I the Univega DS950 actually like those bikes because I I raced that bike for years um, not this particular bike but uh, the Univega DS950 the mango with the black swing arm um, frame and it lasted me longer than any RTS that I've actually I actually had, um, and definitely um, less problems than the LTS. Well, not necessarily the best performing bike, but all around it was a very reliable frame. And I think maybe that's why they, you know, one of the reasons GT tried to go with it. But um, this bike isn't without its quirks because uh, if anybody's taken apart that eccentric eccentric um, bottom bracket. There's O-rings and there's just a bunch of crap that you got to remember um, and tools and how you have to line it up. It is a pain to work on. Uh, so it's good that as the bike evolved, it got easier and more mechanic friendly to do so. But anyway, that's it. Uh, you know, I hope to finish two other bikes. I have my the Mongoose um, Amplifier 2 to finish up and I've got the uh, GT RTS with the disc brakes. So I'm close to finishing that bike up. But anyway, if you have any questions or want to comment, I was, I just thought I would catch everybody up because um, shout out to the guy who talked about owning a Univega um, on my initial Univega bike check. And uh, shout out to you guys for enjoying 
the team I drive built. I, I swear to God, I'm going to put it to correct an external, like a, a better job or post on here. Um, I know that just looks ridiculous. I know it too. I'm ashamed. Anyway, love you guys and gals, you know, because um, uh, I was writing some ladies like recognized me. Um, that was kind of cool. You know, she's like, hey, you're that guy that does all those videos on old bikes. <laughs> like, yeah, that's me. Anyway, that's cool. Um, hope to bump into more people that see me. Um, but once I move, um, I ha I should have workshop space. Just to update a lot of you guys. I should have some workshop space. Actually, this is a new camera. It's my uh, a Hero 8 I'm using right now. Um, because I'd like to do tech videos on how to break down and do certain things. Um, another thing I'm planning to do for, um, if a lot of you guys do have, or a lot of you folks do have friends, um, to do kind of, and that are getting into mountain biking and they don't even know what the hell the parts are. Like I can walk them through the parts. Like it, uh, it's gonna be the anatomy of a mountain bike. Maybe I'll do it tomorrow, I don't know. But I know it's a lot of people getting into sport or doing it, you know, for fitness and health, but they don't know a lot of the parts. And it's not like everybody needs to know Fox 36, Fox 34, what's the difference between the two. It's more like, right, fork lockout f frame seat post saddle or seat you know stuff like that um so i'm hoping to do an educational video and it's not for a lot of us that know bikes it's for a lot of the people who are getting into the sport so i don't need people to get all angry like i know about bikes I, I bet you do i'm just saying for the people who i've ridden some people i've ridden with are new to mountain biking and they'd like to learn more in a non condescending way so i'm gonna do that but anyway i got a lot of stuff planned um hopefully the weather holds up and uh i know i, I need to catch up on even shredded edit videos um but that's it all right thanks for watching um i will see you in the next video all right take care bye